Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're regular here, you know what I'm about to say. I review many photographic, audio and video related products. I laugh because I say it every time. I really don't know what to say because that's what exactly what I do do. So if you're new to the channel, well, that's what I do. Many photographic, audio, video, podcasting, microphones, that sort of thing. Now today, I'm looking at Nikon cameras. The only reason I am is because Many of you say, why do I use Nikon Z mount cameras? Not why, as in they're not very good, but just why do I use Nikon Z cameras? Well, I've used many cameras, everything from Sony's, Panasonic's, um, a lot of Panasonic cameras, Canon's, and I've gone back to Nikon because I just love the handling and the ergonomics of Nikon cameras, as well as the actual image quality and the end results. I think is fantastic, but I'm not brand loyal. I'll use whatever gets the job done and what I enjoy using. And I think that's fundamental in photography and video and probably in anything. I mean, if you're into motorbiking, you're going to buy a motorbike that you love riding, aren't you? You're going to buy, you know, either a BMW or Mercedes. Well, not Mercedes. They don't make motorbikes, do they? I don't know. don't think so. Um, and same with cars. There's a lot of people that are brand loyal. They've always bought a Volvo or they've always bought, you know, again, a BMW. So, you know, people will use what they enjoy using. And I do. I love using my Nikons. I find they're really comfortable to use. The end results are great. Um, and I'm just going to go through, you know, quickly with this video, why I love using Nikon cameras. But as I say, I'm not brand loyal. I do use Sony as well. I've got my wide shot here, for example, is being shot on my Sony A6600. That's one of my favourite cameras ever. I love a 6600 and I've got fitted to it the lovely Sigma 18 to 50 f2.8 lens. And that's fitted to my a, and it's pretty much permanently fitted to the A6600. And that's a great combination. I really enjoy that combination. And that's picking up the wide shot there. My close-up shot, um, out of interest, is being picked up on my uh, Nikon ZFC with the 40mm lens. Now, the ZFC is the odd one out because it's a completely different design to the Z50, Z5, Z6 and what have you. Um, so I'm getting the close-up shot on the ZFC, but the and also the uh, close-up shot for the products or for the cameras has been picked up on my Canon M50 Mark II. So you can see that there. And then I will do a multi-cam edit. I shall sync all these shots together to create a multi-cam edit. Um, now, why do I use Nikon? As I said, I love the ergonomics. Now, one of the features that I really enjoy about the Nikon Z cameras and every ones that I use, I don't use the DSLRs. I used to. I had a D300 and I took that to Australia several times. Fantastic camera, got some fantastic results. Um, you can see a lot of my images will be up on my Flickr page. I'll leave a description in the, I'll leave in the description a link to my Flickr page so you can take a look at my images from all different cameras there. Um, you might find that of interest, but particularly of the Nikon cameras you'll find on my uh, Flickr page and I'll leave that link in the description. There'll also be Amazon affiliate links to the various Nikon cameras that I've purchased. So if you do decide you want to buy one, then take a look at those links. That helps me grow the channel. Uh, it don't cost you any more, but Amazon have got a fantastic returns policy. So if you don't get on with it, you can just return them. Um, now let's have a look at these cameras. I've just picked up out of random on the desk here my Nikon Z50. Now, it's a great travel camera. My favorite travel camera because it is so compact. Um, so compact, but the grip is beautiful. It's got a really, really nice ergonomic grip. Um, and my favorite things about the Nikon is, I say, is the ergonomics. Um, and that uh, design of the Z50, it's got its two function buttons on the front there. You can see there, just around the, the throat of the mount, there's uh, two function buttons there. And there's obviously your layout is the same on the top um, as it would be on the Z5. So if I picked up the Z5 now, uh, which is, I've got to, <laughs> they're all so similar, you can't tell which one's which. Um, the Z5, now the Z5 um, is exactly the same layout. So you've got your function buttons in exactly the same position as you would on the Z50. It's got the two function buttons around the throat of the mount there, the same as on the Z50. Um, and the top plate's laid out the same. So uh, for muscle memory, you don't have to keep remembering 
what have I got set for what? Once you've set it once, for the Z50, the Z6 or the Z5, you can pick any of the cameras up and you're going to be able to use them and get straight through your focus settings, your uh, exposure settings, um, your display settings, whatever it might be. And I think that is great. And the other lovely thing, I got really enthusiastic about Nikon cameras because I do love the ergonomics of them. And that's what makes it really exciting to use Nikon cameras. Now, the other wonderful thing about all the Nikons, including the ZFC, as I say, which is filming the close-up shot here, um, you can preset these function buttons, obviously to whatever, near enough whatever you might need, but the same buttons will act differently to whether you're in photo mode or video mode. Now, on the back of the Z5, the photo video switch is just on the back here. So you just flick that according to whether you want photos or videos. So if I've got that set in photos, I can set all these function buttons, particularly the two on the front here, to do different things in photo mode to what they do in video mode. And that is exactly the same on the Z50 and the Z6. Uh, and when you think the Z50 is their entry-level APS-C body, um, and the fact that you can set it up the same as you can on the Z5 and the Z6, Z7, what have you, I think is awesome. Because as an example, in video mode, I have the top button always set for setting my microphone level, so you can set manual audio levels for your sound input, you know, microphones. And that can be set on all of them, and that is awesome. So. You know, I do really, really enjoy that. Um, the only slightly odd thing with the Z6, um, the Z6 is, is a slightly different design. It's still got your two function buttons on the front, so you can set everything up the same, but it's got a, um, a, a display on the top here, so you can clearly see your exposure settings, your battery level, your aperture settings, um, and all that sort of malarkey. Um, but instead of taking SD cards, it takes your um, either it's either XHD cards or the newer uh, CF Express cards. So you've got here either uh, I've got a CF Express card in there, uh, Type B, I think they call them, isn't it? You know, a Type B CF Express card um, or XQD cards. Um, I've never had one fail on me. So I don't have an issue with it only having one card slot. I think if you were doing professional photography work, then you may have an issue with that. So the Z6 may not be the ideal partner for you. Um, but then the Z5 is awesome because that has got your two SD card slots. So you've got your redundancy built in. So if you're a wedding photographer, uh, events photographer, whatever, the fact that's got your two SD cards, I think is excellent. A slightly different sensor in the Z5 to the Z6. The Z5 hasn't got the backside illuminated sensor, so um, in theory it's not so good in low light. I say in theory because I have taken some low light photographs and I find they're really good, but I have to confess the Z6 is better in low light than what the Z5 would be because that has got the backside illuminated sensor in it. Um, and I've done a video actually, I put a link up here somewhere to the comparison between the Z6, not the Z6 II, but the Z6 and the Z5. You may find that interesting because you can buy a second hand or use, that's a better terminology, a used Z6 from a reputable retailer such as Wex Photographic, MPB, Park Cameras, uh, Clifton Cameras, what have you. I'm talking about here in the UK. I don't know about the States and various other countries, but you can buy a very, very high quality uh, used camera with a 12 month warranty from some of these suppliers at a better price than buying a new Z5. So um, that may well be, you know, the way to go, unless you do need that redundancy, in, in which case the Z5, um, if you want to go the Nikon route, the Z5 is your uh, better option. Um, but as I say, I love the handling. The batteries are all the same apart from the Z50, but the Z50 being an APS-C camera takes the same battery as the ZFC. So even there, they've kept some compatibility. But the Z5 and the Z6 takes the same EL15 battery. I say the same because there's an A, B and C version. 
but they all work. It takes the same uh, battery as does, um, you know, the uh, the other cam Nikon cameras. So yeah, I think that you know my biggest uh, you know thing about all this is the handling and the lens quality. You can even buy really good value full frame lenses for the Z5 and Z6, Z7 and what have you. I've got fitted to this one, the Viltrox uh, 24. I think this is the 24 mil. Um, yeah, the Viltrox 24 mil lens. Uh, full frame lens. I will be doing a review on this lens, but the weather hasn't been decent enough for me to go out and about taking any photographs. But I will be doing a review of this lens, um, and it's a lovely lens. It's really great value for money, and it's a really, really nice lens. Um, and, you know, that's fitted to my Z6. So you can get third party lenses for the Z mount, and they are great, great value. Not as many third party lenses as you can for uh, the Sony E mount, um, and probably the Canon E, well, certainly the Canon EF mount, but that's a DSLR range. Uh, the Canon RF mount, there isn't so many third party lenses, I don't think there's any, but so many third party lenses for that mount. But yeah, the uh, Nikon Z mount range, I love taking photographs with it. Um, and these are, I've got some here on my computer that. Uh, I basically took in London a few years ago when I first got the Z6 and you know it's it's great the uh, image stabilization is great so you can get I've actually made that um, uh, panoram panoramic but um, so you can get, get these lovely um, you know handheld um, sort of uh, slow motion effects um, you know slow motion effects well that train's going through quite slow but it looks like it's going through quite fast but um, you know, that's one of my favourite photographs. Again, ooh, you know, um, image quality is great. This was with the, these were taken with the Nikon 24 to 70 uh, kit lens. They call it a kit lens, but it's a fantastic optic. It's a really, really beautiful lens. Um, and, you know, um, great sharp images. Really, really nice sharp images when the computer decides, there we go. Uh, when the computer decides it's going to load it, um, you know, so yeah, you, you've got no issues with getting great images out of the uh, Nikon, you know, Z mount bodies. Now, I know people have said, you know, the autofocus isn't so good on the Nikons as it is on the Sony's and the Canons. Um, I think it's horses for courses. I don't do um, sports events. I don't do anything where I need, you know, continuous autofocus, rapid autofocus. Um, I, I believe the new Z9 is, you know, the king of that, but I mean, that's an incredibly expensive camera. It's not expensive if you're a pro and you're making money from it, but if you're a hobbyist, then it is an incredibly expensive camera. But again, um, once you get the handling right of these Z bodies, you can get great images. And the autofocus is great. I need autofocus. I rely on autofocus because of my poor eyesight. So if I don't have any issues with it, um, I'm sure the vast majority of you are not going to get issues with getting uh, great focus using the Nikon Z bodies. And again, in video, absolutely superb. Uh, again, I'm using the, I come back to the fact, so I'm using the ZFC for me uh, main shot here. That's in autofocus. That's got eye detect. The ZFC has eye detect in video. The Z50 doesn't. So that's one of the reasons I'm using the ZFC for video because the eye detect is fabulous and it should be picking up my eye. Um, we'll know when we look at the edit, you'll know when you watch it. But um, fabulous, it's, I'm finding the autofocus for video as good on the Nikons as it is on my uh, very trusty Sony A6600. I trust that explicitly. I've never had an issue with that camera um, or any of the Sony cameras. So, you know, very trustworthy. Um, and I find the, the Nikons are really great. It, all the Nikons have phase detect autofocus points as well as contrast detect autofocus. So you're getting a combination of both and I think that's fabulous. Unlike the Panasonic cameras, they use their depth and defocus, which is basically a posh word for contrast detect autofocus. And I always found 
no matter how much I played with them, I always got that little bit of twinkle in the background, a little bit of, you know, movement where the camera lens is hunting, the camera's the computer is hunting for that right autofocus point. Um, so again, video is fabulous on all the cameras. The only thing on the Z5, um, I would say, as I said in my uh, review, when I looked at both the Z6 and the Z5, the only slight downside with the Z5 doesn't, really affect me but with the Z5 which we have here uh, the autofocus in uh, video is great but it crops in if you shoot in 4k it crops to an APS-C crop it's actually a 1.7 times crop so just be wary of that um, but obviously in HD you're using the full width of the sensor um, that's the only thing with the Z5 it does when you're shooting in 4k it does crop so um, just bear that in mind. But, you know, great great camera, great handling, great grip. All the grips are exactly the same on all the Z bodies. Um, and as I say, I would normally use my Z5 as the wide shot, but because I'm showing it here, I'm actually filming the wide shot on my um, A6600. But uh, yeah, um, all in all, again, if we look at the images here, again, all in all, the sharpness is just, Great. I will put a link to these shots um, on my Flickr page. So again, if you want to study them, um, you're very welcome to do so. It's not a problem. And, um, you know, see for yourself, even in low light, low light. I mean, it is really low light, you know, on these, um, uh, on the underground here. And, you know, it's fine. Absolutely absolutely fine but then these were taken on the z6 which has got the backside illuminated sensor and they print nicely i have printed quite a few of these and they do print really really nicely so there we go that's a very quick look at why i love using the nikon uh, z bodies um and interestingly it is the same mount the z mount obviously is the same for the uh, aps-c bodies as it is for the uh, full frame bodies so that's great if you've got either or the lenses will work on both obviously if you're using a full frame lens on the z50 or the zfc you will get that crop factor um that's why I, I mean out of interest you see i'm using the 40 mil lens which is a full frame lens on my zfc body and i'm really pleased that it crops it because that's why i'm using the 40 mil because um, it takes it in just that little bit tighter. So I'm using the full frame lens on my APS-C body for the close-up shot, works beautiful, no problem whatsoever. So you can mix and match between uh, the, you know, the, the two formats. And again, I think that's a wonderful thing uh, with the Nikons, although you can do that, to be fair, you can do that with the Sony E-mounts as well, because uh, I have got a full frame 50 mil lens that I do use on my A6600, which, although that's an APS-C body. So there we go, yeah, um, fantastic system. I really do hope that Nikon, you know, uh, carry on with it. I'm sure they will. Now they've had having a lot of success with the Z9, um, if they can deliver them, which seems to be an issue at the moment, but there we go. So um, thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Hit the like button if you like the content of my videos. Really, really appreciate that. Helps me grow the channel as well. So thanks very much for watching. And as I say, take a look at the images on my Flickr page. Uh, you'll find that much better than viewing them on this video. I've actually, I've just spun through them. So um, there we go. Thanks very much for watching. See you on the next one. Cheers for now. Bye.